Right, we're trying some more of these uh, Peep Minute um, programs that are freely available on the internet uh, for, for plotting frequency response distortion and basically allowing the uh, 8903 to be able to plot out the graphs, which is uh, a really useful feature. Um, I'm just going to run through a couple of them now. I finally got the software to work correctly after, uh, as always, not reading the instructions properly and downloading the wrong version of the program. I'll start off with the frequency response one, which is probably going to be the most useful. Um, and here you see on the on the uh, the monitor, we've got a chart here for uh, frequency response versus um, so it's frequency this size and it's uh, frequency along here and uh, dB roll off here. And our reference point will start at zero dB. Um, here we've got uh, various options to, uh, for allowing to enable filters. Obviously if we're using frequency response we don't want to have any filters enabled at all. Um, we've got uh, this uh, slider here allows us to adjust the reference level of the signal generator of the 8903. So that's our uh, level point and that's set at one volt which is fine. We can adjust the volume control on the, uh, on the amplifier to uh, get it just short of clipping. Um, and then we've got here, we, yes, we've got start frequency here of 20 hertz, uh, stop frequency of presently 30 kilohertz. I'm going to make that 20 kilohertz because really uh, 30 kilohertz is totally unnecessary. So our stop frequency is now 20 kilohertz. No, it's not, it's still 30. And there we go, 20 kilohertz. Um, and it's how many points per decade? So I think we'll make that about, I'll make that 10. Um, now this will show our reference level when the unit starts, this will show our trace where the trace is, the frequency and the dB relative to um, 0 dB, I think it does, so you start at 0 dB and it will work from there. So everything's ready to go, um, the amplifier's uh, been on for, I don't know, 20 minutes. The amplifier, if you're interested, is a JVC AX1, pretty um, nasty amplifier actually, uh, it's just sort of bit tacky build quality. Uh, I've never actually even used it to be honest with you, uh, so I don't know what it's really like. Um, but let's do a run on it anyway and then see what we get. So we'll start off with the uh, clicking the start button and then what will happen now if you see on the oscilloscope we've got a white drive waveform out of the amplifier. We just drive it up to clipping and then back it slightly down. And you can see on the right hand side we're making 15 volts output on the, uh, on the uh, speaker terminals, so they're 15 volts into a, well it's about, it's a, probably about 35 watts and like that, I've got a calculator here. So it's basically 15 squared and then divided by 8, so we're running to an 8 ohm load. Um, our 8 ohm load is up the top here, you're probably just out of view, um, just a couple of uh, 8 ohm uh, metal clads in parallel. Probably not that uh, super accurate, but good enough to prove the point. Don't want to run the generator, the amplifier too long at this low because it's quite a hard low for it to do. It says reference point is okay question mark and you say yes because it's not clipping uh, and then we'll start and we're starting the first plot at 20 hertz uh, and it looks like at 20 hertz the amplifier is actually clipping slightly already. Uh, you can see the chart here forming the plot along I've got a bit of a low frequency hump here, I'll have to see what that is, it might be because I'm driving the amplifier into clipping Maybe some strange effects. I haven't got the bass control turned up. Oh yes, I have got the bass control turned right up. Okay, that's what that is. The amplifier is pushed into clipping at 20 hertz because our reference point's at 1 kilohertz, so the bass response won't make any difference at all at that level, but at low frequency it will be boosting it up. So let's abort this test. Uh, I think we can abort. This. There we go. Let's abort that test, put the bass control back to where it should be. I'm going to start again. This time Hopefully we get a bit of better response than it's just produced on, on the screen. So we'll go for trace 2, which is a purple trace. I'm hopefully seeing that you'll... There we go, there's... Oh, it's a blue trace, and we see... Let's zoom you in so you can actually see what's going on on the screen. Yeah. 
you see the blue trace coming along and it's flattened out 250 hertz, 300 hertz, we're doing quite a few points per decade just to give you a nice fine um, response You see a roll off on the oscilloscope now, and uh, the HP's right hand meter is showing about a 0.1 dB drop per per, in, per reading it takes. It's starting to fall off now. Right. 10 kilohertz now. We've got a minus 1 dB roll off. That's it. Yeah. Test has ended. So there you go, you can see the response of the amplifier is pretty uniform. Uh, we've got a very slight low frequency roll off uh, and a very slight lift of about 50 hertz, and it's pretty much ruler flat until it starts to tailor off about, about 10 kilohertz or so. Now that could be uh, the response of the amplifier itself, or it could be the tone control circuitry isn't that great. You could probably pull that up by lifting the treble up one notch. Um, but that works well. So that's the uh, frequency response uh, 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 program. I'm very pleased with that. That works well. Um, let's try some of the other ones. Let's try the power one. And the power one, I've had a bit of problems getting to work, but I think it's there's nothing wrong with the software. I don't think it's just uh, incompetence on my part. So basically, it's a similar thing on the left-hand side. Uh, it tells you on here uh, generator level. Um, trace, voltage, uh, total harmonic distortion and noise in percentage. So start, our start level is 10 millivolts and we'll end at 1 volt and we've got, um, let's make that 10, no, that, not that one, make that one, S1 volt, uh, what was that, 1000 then I suppose, I can't remember that was, so it's 1000 millivolts and uh, Test frequency is 1 kilohertz, which is pretty standard. Points per decade will make that 10. Seems to work quite well. Now maximum distortion, I think that what that does is either limit, I'm not sure if it limits the graph to the maximum distortion, it ends the program if the distortion gets above this point. So let's set 3% maximum distortion. Z load is our impedance, which is 8 ohms, and that's set OK. So we're going to go start. Let the amplifier run. No, let the uh, signal trick generator run. It's taking a bit longer this time because I think it, it's got to do some quite a few measurements. It's going to make check its level. It's got to check the distortion. It's doing all sorts of things actually. It's going through multiple um, special functions as well. Now let me just show you what the 8903 is doing whilst whilst you're watching the screen. 8903 is quite busy processing all the information from the GPIB controller. You can see it's uh, it looks like it's measuring distortion and noise, and it's using some special function. I can't see which special function it's using, but possibly to measure power. So it's a uh, Certainly working really well. Very pleased with that. I mean, it's made the 8903 even more useful than it was before. So let's just see how here our charts ending up now. We're starting to ramp the power up a bit now, and the program's terminated. So let's have a look, see what we've got. Did it? I think it terminated at one volt, uh, as per instruction on the uh, on the thing, but it never reached clipping. So you can see here that the distortion got to about 1% and then aborted. So let's, let's reduce our points per decade to speed the program up a little bit quicker. Let's make that, uh, let's make that 6. Let's set maximum distortion still to 3. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to increase the gain of the amplifier so it's going to probably start higher up. But let's see if we can push it so we can actually just drive it briefly into clipping. So let's go trace 2. running. And you can see the levels come up because I've pushed the gain up on the amplifier. Oh, 
increasing the voltage now at looks like 200 millivolts. I think that is. What's it say on the chart? Yeah, just past 200 millivolts. Okay, we. Oh, here we go. It just looks like the amplifier is just run into clipping. Yeah, it's levelled out. You see the distortion has gone through the roof. Um, and now the program's aborted because it's seen the distortion go so high. So that's basically our peak level of power here. Um, and what does that reckon it is? This is the 53 watts, so it looks like about 30, 36, 37 watts before the distortion goes through the roof. And it's got that typical um, response curve of an AB amplifier where the uh, crossover distortion is more noticeable until you start to drive the amplifiers more harder on basically uh, in I i.e. towards class A and then you start to generally overload the amplifier distortion rises rapidly and it clips so that's um, that works really well as well let's exit that uh, so the other one is total harmonic distortion Let's have a look at total harmonic distortion. So I think basically what this one will do is look at total harmonic distortion through the frequency range. So this will be another one of the more useful ones. This and the frequency response will probably be the, the most interesting one to, to look at. So I'm going to set a reference level on the generator here to uh, about 600 millivolts. I think that should be fine. You adjust it here as well, fine adjustment. Uh, and we've got a start frequency of 20 hertz, stop frequency of uh, 20 kilohertz. We're going. For, I'm going to go for 10 points per decade on this one. Uh, we're going to set our start, and it will probably ask me if the reference level is okay because I need to just check the amplifier is not being overdriven. And the reference level. Just make sure we're not drawing to clipping, which I am. Okay, reference level is okay. So now it will start with the frequency response and look at the distortion. Looking at total harmonic distortion and noise, and it's probably 0.9%. Point Bear in mind this amplifier is having both channels driven, uh, which basically means that the amplifier will probably perform slightly better in its power capability if it's running in a single channel because it doesn't pull the power supply down so hard. Okay, distortion is staying at under 1%, which is a uh, Pretty acceptable for an amplifier of this age. And modern amplifiers will do a lot better, but um, you tend not to be able to hear anything until it gets about three, over three percent. And certainly with older ears like mine, you probably can't hear until it's about ten percent anymore. But no, probably five percent, something like that. Okay, so we're going up to we're at five kilohertz now. Slightly unusual sort of uh, graph, really, because I don't really, I don't think I've often seen distortion versus uh, frequency response, but it is quite an interesting thing to look at. So we terminated the program, and you can see here that the harmonic distortion tends to drop away at higher frequencies. Um, it's peaked at just under one percent and, and stayed under one percent all the way. So that just goes to show that the amplifiers. Um, pretty good and you'd actually probably find that that distortion figure would be slightly higher if you turn the amplifier down to a lower level um, but usually the distortion is probably at its optimum just before clipping as you saw on the previous chart so that works absolutely fine as well I don't know what the last chart is let's have a look at the last chart this is voltage uh, versus what's this voltage versus total harmonic distortion noise. Well basically that's basically power versus uh, total harmonic distortion but let's, let's run it anyway just to make sure it works okay. So we've got no filters on, we're starting at, we're starting at 10 millivolts I think uh, and ending at 1 volt, test frequency 1 kilohertz, 10 points per decade, maximum total harmonic distortion of 3% so we're going to go start And it's ramping up the voltage now.
I think the pr difference between this and the previous perversion is one will measure power and this will measure voltage. I think it all it, all it allows you to do is actually it, it works out the, the you, you specify the, res the resistive load you're into and it will work out the power from there. Whereas this is just pure voltage. Okay, we're just about 600 millivolts. Amplifier should be running to clipping soon. Yeah, it's flattened off now. Distortion will go to the roof now. There you go. And it's aborted. So there you go. It's sort of basically the same sort of thing. You've got you've got total harmonic distortion here versus input input volts, which is actually output volts from the um, 